It's for smoothing out wood so it'll fit close together when you nail or notch it. Not a bad idea in a boat, huh? Yes. Can I smooth some wood? I don't know, Jenny fumed. Mellowing a bit, she asked, Are you a respectable, efficient workman? Sure, replied Liz, undaunted. I'm a very respectable fish hunt worker. Jenny had to laugh, and finding her indignation at Dewey subsiding, she accepted the toolbox and, and invited Liz and her sister to the boat launching sometime that evening. Turning Liz around and pointing her home, Jenny crossed the river yet again and passed a quiet morning and afternoon beneath the swaying, wind-tossed limbs. While proceeding to build upon the flimsiest of nautical bases of patchwork logs laced together by worn-out ropes and twine, Jennifer banged together her interpretation of a river trawler. While she would have preferred the niceties of experienced sawyer hands, she felt immense confidence in her squared-out, boxed-in passenger area. It encouraged her to manhandle the huge, rotten rudder she had recovered the week earlier from the reedy shores of the flooded Chattahoochee. The strain was immense, but she managed to line it up at the end of the craft and proceeded to nail it in. After the exertion, however, she was thrilled to see her gang of compatriots, Dewey, Rady, and Liz, stomping down the river trail to the construction site. Liz and Dewey stomped happily down the muddy embankment and splashed the creek waters at one another. Rady held back, seeking an neater, nicer descent, but seeing none, abandoned her shoes and slid down with the rest. It's looking fine, Jenny, Rady began, inspecting the wobbly craft from stem to stern. I'm not sure the sides are strong enough to support our oars, she announced. Perhaps we can wiggle the back end with one oar, like one of those flat boats Lincoln grew up on. Might be a good plan, Dewey answered but we'll have to get it in the water to run some tests. Papa will be along soon, Jenny answered. Let's finish up as much as we can and see if he'll let us try it out. With that, the ensemble bumblebeed their way around the sadly discombobulated raft, nailing, twining, twisting, and pounding their rude rustic elements of nature into a sustainable float. Tinkering is a fine pastime for children who intend to create a new mold for civilization. Experimentation led to progress as what didn't work was ripped out and replaced with a second or third effort, finally achieving some presumed objective. Papa Stanhill arrived around sundown with an equally tired co-worker from Fouts Mill, Derek Smith. The two admired and congratulated the work crew on their efforts and after an extended moment of conjoling and pleading, began to lift and slide the burdensome craft into the placid shallows waters of the Anawaki estuary. The crush to climb aboard would have tipped the sturdiest of fairies, but somehow three and a half children managed to find a place on the water-soaked timbers of their imaginative creation. A great deal of fun and excitement A great deal of fun and excitation was had for the few fine moments the great barge remained intact. It did not take long, however, for the water-soaked bindings and rotted twine to begin the unhinging process. First, a few small pines rolled off the end, and then the larger log timbers underneath gave way to a slackening motion that undulated down the remaining assemblage. Liz was first to notice some difficulties and sprung to the rear, pushing her fastidious sister, who was unawares of the escalating difficulties to the fore. Lacking a firm foothold, and not anxious to have a twisted ankle fall into the thick, masticating support logs, Dewey chose to abandon ship 
at this precipitous point. Unfortunately, his exit generated an equal and opposite reaction on Rady, who fell equally hard in the opposite direction. <laughs> Howls of laughter began to emanate from the shoreline, and Papa Stanhill and Derek greatly enjoyed the developing melodrama. Liz decided being wet was more fun than fighting to stay dry and leaped frog-like into the cool, silky waters of the river. This he left our young Commodore Jennifer striding the decks of a difficult situation and in a manner honorable to America's first naval hero, John Paul Jones, 1776, she shouted from the failing decks of her badly damaged Bonhomme Richard, I have not yet begun to float. Shouts from the shoreline recalled the War of 1812 frigate Chesa Chesapeake and its dying Captain James Lawrence admonition to his sailors when destroyed by the British warship Shannon. Don't give up the ship, yelled Mr. Smith. With her crew enveloped in the splashing sapphires of the evening river flow and additional square footage of her aquatic support drifting ever more swiftly in opposite directions, Jenny, as only a true great lady of the South could, searched her inadequate educational memorizations and defiantly offered the words of David Farragut at the Battle of Mobile Bay, April 12, 1862, who she, con she conveniently forgot at the time was a Union officer. Damn the torpedoes! Full speed ahead! She pushed her long roll oar decisively and deeply into the murky debris-choked waters, but miscalculating, found no bottom mud to stabilize her assault, initiating gravitational forces, which cascaded her swiftly to the bottom of the riverbed. Mud-soaked, with weedy hair, and choking on bits of twine that until recently had so aptly held her glorious achievement together, she felt the pines of a sentimental acquiescence tugging at her heartstrings. The words of Oliver Wendell Holmes' immortal Old Ironsides passed in review. Oh, better that her shattered hulk should sink beneath the wave. Carpathian rescuers in the form of Papa Stanhill and Derek pulled all the survivors of this titanic disaster out of the water, and unlike the Atlantic version of said 1912 event, a great deal of laughter and fun permeated the occasion. <coughs> it was yet another Jenny Stanhill whopper that would be told and retold in every household, continually embellished until the embarrassment level would become so intolerable that Miss Jenny would leave the room when even the subject of rafting was broached. It was a happy, delighted crew that departed from one another that evening at early candlelight from the shores of the Chattahoochee River. One hastened to the bustle of town, and the other to the tattered, lonely outpost of a well-loved farm. 